Come on by and have a bite at the Crossroad Diner. The place where your spirit goes when it might be time to change direction. We talk to people from all walks of life about when they found their passion, their direction, and how they had the courage to take action. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Crossroad Diner. I'm Steve McCurdy, your host. With me today is Dave Maldonado. Dave's a great friend of mine, and uh, I directed Dave in my uh, epically forgettable I Flunk Sunday School, and uh, he stole most every scene he was in with his wonderful <laughs> quiet way. Uh, Dave's been in a lot of uh, uh, a lot of things that you've seen, uh, and uh, you know, Deepwater Horizon I guess is probably one of the biggest budget ones, but you got a couple that are in post right now, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I've been working. I've been lucky enough to 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 work fairly, be an actual working actor for the last yeah. uh, ten years or so. Tell tell people what that means, working actor. That's because not everybody's well, going to know your name. Yeah, yeah. For for me, it's just uh, working on a regular basis, and uh, which is extremely difficult to do. Yeah. Um. From what from I Houston, found, from what um, from Houston, yeah. Texas, in particular, yeah. From the southeast, um, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a it's a hard thing. I mean, you can do commercials, you can do corporate videos and commercials, indie film, all that good stuff. But to be a working actor in in big budget productions, TV and film, on a regular basis, to me, that's a working actor. You can I can I can pay my rent. Uh, I don't know if I'll pay my daughter's tuition to this school. <laughs> That might be rough, uh, but hey, I, I'm doing my part. I'm I'm, I'm putting my, uh, you know, my slice of the pie in there. Yeah, uh, one of the, the, your credits that I see is in post production right now is the Vanishings at Caddo Lake. Now that sounds yes. like a really high minded, um, you know, intellectual piece that some folks might not pick up on. But I was raised uh, about 45 miles west of the shores of Caddo Lake. Uh, on the shores of Caddo Lake is a little town called Uncertain because you don't know if you're there or not. It's uh, <laughs> so. Uh, well, what, what can you tell? What can you release about that upcoming uh, well, epic? I, there were there was a lot of time that I was out there in near Shreveport where I felt I was very uncertain. I didn't know where the hell I was. Right uh, out in the swamp and and out of the swamp, <laughs> I didn't know where I was, but. Um, I tell you what, man, it's a great, it's a great script. Uh, M. Night Shyamalan is one of the producers. Wow! And he helped, uh, he helped write the script. Um, uh, the production company, um, it, it's a fledgling uh, production company, and they kind of got uh, uh, M. Night to kind of come on and 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 add some 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 cash and and cachet, if you will. Yeah, right. And. Um, the script is, is fascinating. You know, it, it's it's a lot like all of M Night stuff. It's it's supernatural, and uh, you're not really sure what's going to happen next. Naturally Dylan supernatural. Is in it. Yes. yes. Who, who and, else? Um, who did you say? Uh, Dylan O'Brien. Okay. Who, who he and I worked on uh, on um, um, uh, Deep Water Horizon. Together. Yeah. Right. Right. So we, we, we got close on deep water and then we got to work on that again. And, and we got, we got to catch up and, and uh, reconnect. And uh, yeah, the script is, is really good. It's really, uh, and that's the thing for me is if, if, the, if the script is good, you know, everything else should, should come together really yeah, well. Right. And I think we got something really special. Well, and if it's it. not, it makes it almost impossible for it to come together. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, and 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 so for some reason, really, really bad movies get made. Not you know, <laughs> yeah. much money, Adam. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's it is kind of shocking, isn't it? I mean, given how much <laughs> is spent on things, it's like you know, can we do something good? Is it that hard to do? Um, so, so the Crossroad Diner, uh, as I have very loosely outlined to you, is that place where your spirit goes when you're kind of going, do I want to do this? Do I want to keep doing this? Do I want to do another thing? So, um, and we do things, you know, we, we come to different parts of ourselves throughout our lives. So when you were a kid, uh, what, you know, I know you wanted to be a fireman at some point. I know you wanted to be a cop at some point. 
uh, after that, when things settled down, what was you know, like when you were in high school and stuff, what was the vision? I wanted to be an artist. I, I was a visual artist. I, I drew all the time. Oh, yeah. I was always drawing. Um, and I took pride in it. And the older I got, the more impractical that idea became as a line of work. So, oh, well, you can draw, but what are you going to do when you go to college? I'm like, well, I'll, I'll major in art in, in, in college. Where'd you, like, well, I'll, I'll major in... Where did you grow What's up? That? Where did you grow up? South, South Louisiana. Okay. New Iberia. Okay. All right. You yeah. know, big artist so, country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, every Cajun you know, I know is a is an absolute artist with food or music or something. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. But professionally, um, were you uh, now? Are these doubts yours, or are these coming from outside? All me. Yeah. All me. A lot of a lot of self imposed doubt. Uh, everybody was encouraging. Hey, you draw so well. You, you should, you know, you should do this. And my whole thing was like, I'm either going to be an architect because at the time you had to draw. Yeah. Not so much anymore. Right. Everything's done by computers. Or I was going to be a commercial artist. You still don't draw. It's all done by computers. You know, you can draw with your computer. And and I I would I dabbled in acting in in elementary school in high school. And I had fun with it, but it was never, I never took it seriously because that's, that's not a job. That's not a job. There's no way that could be a job. So uh, I majored in art in, in college at the University of Louisiana, the University of Louisiana. Okay. Lafayette. Um, so, yeah, I did that for a while and, and figured out that, man, you really got to be sharp really sharp with the computer if you're going to do that mm -hmm. and i wasn't and uh i was taking acting classes and i was like man this is, maybe this is what i need to be doing you know so that's what i did and and and, and the, the the thought of getting an agent and pursuing an agent and getting work that way was was very foreign to me but it obviously and, evolved uh, that way and so at some point what, yeah. what was the journey like? yeah well, what did, what did you well, get your well, degree well, in? I, I'm sorry. Let, let me let me get a little bit logical here. What did you get your degree in? Well, like every logical person, I got it in general studies. Oh. <laughs> and uh... <laughs> I, remember, I remember him in the, in the battle of make a make a buck <laughs> <laughs> with uh, with a concentration in art and uh, acting and theater and uh... okay. I took I, I took a lot of great classes. It took me twice as long as to get out of school as it took my wife. She was in engineering. She was like, boom, 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 I'm done. And I'm like, you know, still in school, and she's uh, she's out. And I'm like asking her dad if I could marry her. He's like, well, you're gonna get out of school at some point. And he's like, yeah, yeah, of course. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. Um, but the the more acting classes I took, I, I was like, okay, well, maybe I can. Maybe I can do theater. Um, you know, maybe I can move to to, to Austin and uh, pursue film there. And and all these things were were popping up in my head. And at that particular time, my wife got a job in Houston, and we moved. And that's where my the ground the the grassroots of my theater film acting experience took took root. It was in Houston, Texas. And once I got here, I got a little, uh, uh, you know, day-to-day -day job at Michael's framing because I was framing my own art. Sure. I still wanted to do art. And uh, I was taking every acting class I could. I was uh, auditioning for every theater production, community theater, everything. The alley, uh, you know, the st stages, everywhere. I was trying to just, I was pursuing it. And that's what I tell people that are starting out. I was like, just do it, man. Do it. Community theater. I'm like, well, I don't know where to start. Well, look, look online and see who has auditions. Right. Some little crappy theater in, in, the, in the corner of town, you know, just right. go do that. Absolutely. Um, and, and that's what I did for years and years and years. And over that period of time, I got an agent and I, I started 
making relationships with casting directors. But this is 20 years in sure. the making, you know, as far as like making relationships with casting directors in Dallas, Atlanta, Louisiana, uh, Austin. It's taken me a long time, you know. Um, but you have, and that's the only way. I in addition to the relationship that you have with your agent, and that, um, are we talking? T- tell me the name of your agency. Uh, Pastorini Bosby in Texas. Right, and yeah. that's a that's a team. I mean, I know you've got an agent that you know is crazy mad in love with you, but they're also is that they are a team who take different projects and and they'll say, oh, send Dave for that. Um, so you've got relationships with that agent and that agency. But then as you get these develop, as you get calls to these only five or six towns in the South where movies are filtered through, I would assume that you're making relationships with those casting directors and uh, the folks that are on the filtering end of that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. so they do, do they call for you? Do, do they call your agent and say, hey, get Dave in here? Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, it's crossed to that point to where I've, I've, I've got relationships now where the, the, the casting directors would rather just go through me. Okay. Uh, which is very flattering, although I would much rather my agent do all the <laughs> all that other, uh, all the business side of it. But um, but that's very, con- yeah, I've got to I mean, be they're... confident uh, reinforcing to have the agent yeah, just call you. Yeah. 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 And, and I mean, it's just, it's just going in there and, and time after time lately it's been via tape, but there have been many times that I've been in the room right. and I just, I did whatever I needed to do. Uh, whether it was, uh, you know, I was so nervous I couldn't see straight and I just performed. Uh, sometimes I, I'll perform for half the audition and I'll just, Lay an egg right there in the room. And it'll be god awful. And they say, "Well, let's try this other role." And this other role will, like, okay, well that's yeah. good. And I basically clutch victory out of the jaws of defeat, <laughs> and um, and it, it it ends up that right. way. So um, the 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 casting directors trust me, and they want to push for me because a lot of the projects in in our area they're they're casting all the big roles out of L.A. and New York. Everything else they're filling in right. with the Southeast talent. And I, I am fortunate enough to have casting directors say, well, we got this guy. How about we move him up, uh, you know, to this role? Right. You know, like for Your Honor, the role that I did for Your Honor with Brian Cranston, um, that, that that wasn't meant for me, I don't think, in the beginning. and But... I, I read for it, and I was in the room, and I did a good job. And they were like, "Well, it's like, yeah, he's good, but no, yeah, we're looking for the somebody else out of LA." And like, well, oh. and and that Megan Lewis has been my champion since the beginning, since since I started getting any momentum in this business. She she always fights right. me. She's like, "Well, why not him? Why not him? Tell me why." Let's 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 give him a chance at this, right. and she's done that time and time again, and that's that's been, uh, you know, it's been incredible for my. my well, there's a, but there's several elements to that, David. Uh, you you got cast, and you delivered, and you're not a prima donna. You show up. You're extremely, you know, you're a nice, respectful guy that's easy to work with. I mean, there's a lot to be said for that. Yeah. And so, yeah. um, you know, not only delivering as an actor, but you also just deliver as a person. And people, you know, people like to work with people they know, like, and trust. And so, um, you know, your investment in being a dependable guy who delivers the goods and also is kind of fun to have around when the coffee spills on the star, that, uh, <laughs> that's, that's got something to be said for it. Um, so, yeah. so what are you doing with art now? Oh dear. Should, I, should I not have asked? Very little. Um, Is that because of time, or did I, you drift away? I, I I just I drifted away, and I uh, my son's doing it doing it a lot now. Uh-huh. And at times when I'm on the road, I will just sit down and start drawing because it, it, when I'm alone and isolated, there's some kind of mental health things that I need. Right. 
I need to work out. So um, uh, loneliness and uh, isolation, um, and I, I have to keep myself busy. And there's so many, there's only so many times you can, you know, walk around the town, go to a museum, come back to your room and uh, watch some TV, talk to your family. Uh, there's an artistic outlet with drawing that I can just focus on that um, and, 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 and kind of uh, get a hold of those toys in the attic that uh, everybody has. And it, it, it helps. And I need to be, I need to do it more. Often, right. Right. To be honest. Yeah. So your son has an interest in art. Uh, you he mentioned does. the daughter yeah. that you're trying to go steal some money so you can pay the tuition for her. Where, what, what's her, right. what are these ages? Uh, my son is 15. He's playing a uh, linebacker at a uh, Klein Collins in spring and uh, very interested in art. Uh, his uh, sister, Livia, is uh, getting ready to start her freshman year at uh, Texas A&M in engineering. It's the hat. It's the hat, yeah. I, I love I love when people bring up the hat, like, hey, man, what are you, what, did you go there? I'm like, no, just my daughter. Just my daughter. My favorite hat. I, like, I just like the hat. And, but I get into a lot of conversations. In fact, I, I, went, I went and saw ZZ Top while I was shooting in, in Oklahoma City. Okay. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that's where I got COVID <laughs> uh, a few months ago. I mean, it was like. You know, uh, for lack of a better word, it was a white trash kind of free for all <laughs> with uh, must have felt right know, at home. Uh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Right at home. I had my hat on and, I, you know, talked to a lot of people, shook a lot of hands, <laughs> uh, maybe gave a few hugs. And like a week later, I'm like, oh, man, something's not right. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but I got into conversations with people. Oh, uh, A&M. Yeah, A&M, man. When did you go? Gig them. I'm like, yeah. It's my daughter. I have no allegiance so, to so, the school. So what's whatsoever. her interest? What's she going to study, do you think? She's going to study engineering, uh, mechanical, uh, or chemical. Okay. And, how, yeah. and how did that evolve for her? Well, her, uh, her mom's uh, a chemical okay. engineer. And she studied uh, University of Southwestern Louisiana. She, she graduated in chemical engineering. And that's what her mom does now. Um, what capacity? I'm not real sure. She changes jobs from right. time to time. So what? What? She, she's leading a group in a, in a chemical engineering capacity, and uh, but yeah, uh, that's what she wants to do. She wants to do chemical engineering or mechanical, and um, yeah. So that's that's. And how, how did how did you? She's how a little, did your wife get interested in that? I mean, I know South Louisiana is. Oil, 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 all the time. Is she, mm -hmm. is she, was she mm -hmm. family? Did, yeah. How did she get into chemical engineering? Well, her, 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 uh, her dad, her brother, both graduated chemical engineering from the, uh, Louisiana Lafayette. And she's always been, I think it's just, you're really good at math and science. That's sure. where you go. Math and science, uh, engineering. So that's what she did. She was really good at chemistry. She got me through chemistry that's in high school and and college, which is why we ended up getting married. And then after I was, you know, then I was like, well, I don't have any use for chemistry now. So I guess we got to figure out a different way to build on this relationship because I don't, you know, I don't really have any use for chemistry now. So, um, so anyway, uh, but yeah, that's the thing and chemistry and math. And I am, you know, they come home and they have the homework, math, and science. You go make a cheeseburger for them, right? I go make a cheeseburger. They have uh, a little bit of geography I can maybe help with. History. Art. Ah. I'm okay. the man. I'm the man. All right. So Acting. because you're on sets with people who are on the same challenging journey that you are, my guess is you've heard a lot of stories. And um, and some of those stories were were real battles to get to where they are. And others were a lifelong passion that they just, you know, whatever it takes, I'm going to get there. I'm, you know, if it's if it's community theater, if it's, you know, I mean, there's something about storytelling that yeah. gets into people, I think. So um, you got any of those that you can share about how a person kind of overcame um, 
lack of encouragement and had to bootstrap it. Yeah. You know, once, once I, once I decided, uh, this is what, what I was going to do. Um, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to be an actor. I, I really like this acting thing, man. This, I feel like I felt at home mm-hmm. doing it. So, um, I was like, okay, well, all, all I can think of was just do it and do it all the time and study it, take classes and do it, audition for plays, do play after play after play. And I got, you know, I got tired of my wife saying like, Hey, you can be home tonight. It's like, no, I have a rehearsal night after night. No, I have a rehearsal. I was working and this was not, these are non-paying community theater shows. So I just, I, I, I worked and worked and eventually got an agent and they got me a couple of gigs where I was like doing industrial kind of where I got paid, did a couple of commercials. Um, and then, uh, we moved to Houston and then I started tapping into the Austin and Dallas scene. We actually moved to Houston right before the big theater, uh, uh film right. boom in, in right. Louisiana. Great. Time. Which you would think is the worst time, but while I was here, I was cutting my teeth, doing theater, doing corporate videos, commercials, everything I could get my hands on while working a daytime job, uh, part-time, and just, you know, right. grinding. And that's I knew that's what I wanted to do. Um, and, and, and over a, a long period of time, I just started – I always tell people it's a, it's a marathon. It's not it's not a quick a right. quick thing. You know, you build relationships right. with people. I built relationships with all these casting directors over the past twenty yeah. years, and they trust me now. But it's taking a long time yeah. to do that. You know, yeah. so uh, I'm proud. Yeah, of that, I you think you would um, be. And and I'm proud of the the fact that uh, I've developed kind of this audition technique and being on sets and kind of uh, a lot of times I'm on set and I'm like, God, I, I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. You know, it's, it's uh, because there are so many technical uh, aspects of being on a film set because everyone's yeah. different. Every set you go on, they're like, okay, we're going to do this and this and this. I'm like, okay, well, uh, and you have to adapt. You have to adapt to different techniques, different people, um, and that, you know, that, that's rough sometimes. And you have to kind of have some tough skin and, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's been a long time coming, but I, I, and I don't, I don't have any aspirations of breaking any sort of barrier of, okay, I'm going to finally do this. I'm going to finally, uh, make it big. It's like, I just yeah. got to work. And, you know, I've seen people that make it big, they make it big 10 years ago and, and there's no right. they're nowhere to be seen. I would rather yeah. be consistent. That whole slow and steady wins the race thing. I want to work. I was consistently with, back, back in the day run. of the contract player, you know, you got these movies that were made in the thirties and the forties uh, and early part of the fifties where you saw these character players in all these films and they're, they're passing away now, a lot of them. And, and they've got hundreds mm-hmm. of credits for, you know, four, five, seven minutes on screen, pivotal role at the right mind at the right time. Um, I think of, um, I can think of a dozen of them, but I can't think of anything that I would enjoy more than, you know, going in, having 15, 20 minutes on a, you know, on, on a film with a bunch of folks that I enjoy being around, you know, and a character that I can kind of add some, something to. And then go home. <laughs> you know, it just that yeah. that, that yeah. kind of acting would really appeal to me too. And um, yeah, so what what is the role that you enjoyed finding and doing uh, among the many that you've done? What what's one that kind of comes to mind? Well, gosh, um, there have been quite a few over the last. Uh, Last well, yeah, you got to scroll years. down your IMDb um, page, so you're already that guy. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, I'm that guy that you might know. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
you know, and 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 luckily I can I can play lots of different character right. uh, types. You know, I can play the I can play the good cop, I can play the bad cop, I can play the the, the criminal, that kind of thing. Um, you know, I and and when I did Deepwater Horizon, that was my first uh, big role right. in a big movie. Up until then, I had done. Lots of big roles in small movies and lots of big role, uh, you know, small roles in big movies. So it was like that was the one where they had yeah. my name on the chair. I was like, okay, well, my name's on the chair. This is a lot of pressure. It was uh, Peter Berg, and it was it was intense. You know, it was it was a, a trial by fire yeah. with that guy, and that that experience taught me so much. Um, but I I, I think um, you know when I when I get to work as a dad, you know. Um, and as a family man, I, I don't get to do it very often. Um, usually, the one I, I'm, I'm playing cops all the mm-hmm. time, I, I, you know, detectives and that sort of thing. And it's it's more of a um, not a caricature, but it's 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 a you know stock it, character, it, it's right? Not very flesh sort of a stock character, they say. Right. Yeah. And and unfortunately, in our times now, it's it's a it's a racist yeah. guy. You know, it's it's. It, it, especially if it's uh, something that's um, right, you know, from a period, a true story sure. from a certain period. It's like, oh well, we gotta we gotta have some racist white guys. I'm like, okay, I'll I'll, I'll help that. I'll I'll right. help play that story, you know, I, you know, and I'll do it uh, sincerely. Um, but yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think when, when I did Queen Sugar, that was one of the guys that I could actually play. Who was in an all black cast, who was a good guy, uh, a Caucasian guy who was trying to help people. And that was all he was. You know, in in the back of my wife and I's mind, we're like, oh, I hope he doesn't hope he doesn't do something bad. You know, it's like is he gonna turn into something? It's like, but he never did. He never did. He was always out to help Miss Vi and 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 do the right thing. And um, you know. After you play a handful of bad cops and <laughs> racist people, yeah. it's nice to play those that are actually Absolutely. out to do good. Absolutely. You know. So before we wrap up here, because we're kind of getting tight on time, um, I heard the best information or the best advice I ever heard for uh, artists. Uh, this professor was uh, asked uh, about you know there's not a there's not a ladder there's not a a way to go in at this level and work your way up. And he said, oh, no, no. He said, you've got a lot more control than you know. And he said, there's there's three things you can control, one thing that you can't that affects success. First is persistence, which obviously you've done. You've kept at it, kept at it, kept at it, kept at it. Mm-hmm. The the second one is know people who know people who can hire you. And certainly, you know, you, at least you know your agent, but now you know all these other casting directors. The third is be right. delightful to work with. He said, you know, you control all of those. Yeah. The fourth one does not guarantee success. All three of those, if you keep at it, will, you know, if you do those things, eventually you'll have some success. The last one does not guarantee success, but it magnifies the success of the other, and that's talent. And you'd think it would be the first one, but it's not. And I'm sure you have worked with a lot of mm-hmm. not-so-talented people that were incredibly successful, but probably because they had some of those other three characteristics. But uh, – yeah. Right. As the you yeah. know, people that come to hear this podcast or to watch it on the video on on YouTube, most of them are at some kind of crossroads of their own, uh, and they're not getting the kind of a lot of external encouragement. They've got to reach down inside of them. And if you got anything that you could offer them, other than just even your own example of your life and, and struggling for it, we'd love to hear it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's all about the work. Oh, that's you know? good. Um, you know, and, and so many people, so many people focus so much, not that social media and marketing and all that good stuff is not important. It's not very, I don't, I don't utilize it nearly right. as much as I should. Um, but, you know, if I'm going to make a post about some 
mundane kind of meaningless thing on, on Instagram to kind of gain traction for my, my brand, I may as well just be sitting right. somewhere reading an acting book, you know, or, 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 uh, calling right. my agent and have a meeting or getting together with some other actors and doing scenes. I, I, I think all that is much more important than, um, than, than the social media uh, thing. I, I, I work regularly and I don't, uh, you know, I don't associate that right to social right. media at all. I don't have a following. I don't, I don't have a following. I have very few followers on and all most, the social most, media. Most are uh, your friends like casting you know, directors, buddies like me. You know, I would imagine. Yeah, and I'm not, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, this free gig, I'm not going to be able to get you a heck of a lot of work. I paid you one. Yeah, you're not really pushing. You're not really pushing me over the edge, Steve. You know. Uh, well, you had, you had a really big role in a really little movie uh, for me, and I and I appreciate it very, very much. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's the thing for me. Yeah. It's it's the work. Well, and I think that the work is important. That's a very important that's message important. because that's where you. That's where you now. Let me just add one quick question. Where does it, where do you get the feels? Is it, is it on the set doing it? Is it in rehearsal? Is it watching it on the screen? What, where, where is it that you get the fulfillment? Um, the fulfillment? Well, you keep, you keep showing up and you keep doing it. And, uh, I, I get and it. you know, part of it's a paper. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I, when I get a scene and I, and I start to read through it and I'm like, Oh, I see, I see what's happening here. And I connect. If I connect with the scene and the character, I'm like, okay, something. There's something rich in something uh, that I can connect with. That's important. Um, that I can be passionate about. Um, and then I, I, I give that over to the audition, and I I let it go, um, and I forget about it. And I have people that tape me, and I'm like, oh yeah. Uh, we, I've done my work. Let's do our thing. And half the time they'll say, Hey, you booked this role. I'm like, great. Let's, let's have that same energy when I, uh, when I'm on set and I'll, I'll try to deliver that same and not again, it's going to be completely different. There's all kinds of different people. <laughs> there's cameras, there's a different director. They might want a whole different take. Um, but it's all about, uh, being present and being, uh, sincere and, and, and not, not, uh, not being pretentious, man. I, I hate that. And I've done it. And I hate that self. I hate that part of myself where you just, let me try to do this because that's what they want. I'm like, no, just be true. <laughs> just be true in your, in your uh, audition and in your performance for the camera and for the director. And if they want something different, you stay in it and you try to give them a little nuance. Um, and most of the time, if all that happens, the finished product that you see on the TV or the, the big screen. Dave, Dave Maldonado, just be true. I like it. Thanks for joining us today on the, at the Crossroads Diner. Dave, thank you for giving us this time and uh, much good luck. I know that in a couple of weeks you're heading out to another set and uh, our thoughts are with you. Until next week, folks, we'll see you right back here at the Crossroads Thanks, Diner. Man. Come on by and have a bite at the Crossroad Diner, the place where your spirit goes when it might be time to change direction. We serve up specials in the diner Mondays and Thursdays, so give us a like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.